welcome on board the van so we're uh, here in Guernsey as usual in a minute I'm gonna turn the camera around so we'll have the onboard camera running and you'll be able to see exactly where I'm driving so I'll give you a forward view but at the moment we're just on me so I just want to explain what we're doing uh, in today's drive along as usual we are in Guernsey in the Channel Islands and I'm gonna drive in a minute we're gonna go up I'm on the way to St Martin which is a parish and uh, it's a hot day so I'll just put the air conditioning on it's like 25 at the moment and they give a, it's getting hotter it's a very very hot day today I'm um, just at Cattell Church um, I'm just on the way to somewhere then on the way back I'm gonna go drive through St Peterport I'm gonna go down the Velde Tears and I'm gonna give you the view of what's going on so uh, you'll be able to see all the goings on on the Guernsey Road I'm just going on the pavement and I've got to get off quick because you're not meant to stay on it by the way it's a side note on the pavements a um, lot of comments a lot of things going on about are you allowed to drive on the pavements or are you not they did this thing a while ago actually in Guernsey about there was a certain road that people were driving along the pavement on too long and I, I sort of get it um, in Guernsey, if you've ever driven in Guernsey, this is a classic road where I am now actually. Sometimes if you meet two vehicles, there's nowhere to pass. So one of you has to very safely mount the curb or the pavement and stop. The best thing is to do is stop. Let the, the traffic pass, then come off the pavement safely. Like now, look, so there's not room here. So I'm going to the pavement and I'm pulling off. I think the issue was is where they would call it pavement surfing where people were mounting the pavement and just driving along it for a long period of time obviously that is dangerous for obvious reasons uh, but I think it's sort of a little bit accepted in Guernsey that you do have to mount pavements it's common sense isn't it it's common sense if you're going to mount the pavement be really really careful obviously make sure there's none on it stop so you're not driving along it let whatever's passing pass and carefully come off it. I think that's a sensible way. I don't know if that's technically what they tell you in the highway code, but just driving generally, I would say that makes sense to me. Um, but anyway, that was, that was a side note. That's, the video isn't about driving on the pavement, but I thought I'd just mention it. Of course, it's tight around here. So yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera around and you're gonna see the views of Guernsey, remember if you've uh, first time here, this channel's all about Guernsey. I do drive-alongs and walk-alongs. Today is obviously a drive-along. And uh, anything else I uh, come across or speak about. I do some commentary as well as we drive along. And uh, sorry about the shades, which is very, very bright. Anyway, let's get on with it. St. Peterport, here we come. All right, off we go. So uh, we are just heading into St. Martin's, or in St. Martin's, and uh, the uh, Rue Maze, and we're heading towards the Velde Tears. Really nice day still, it's done a little bit of work somewhere, and um, we're going to drive through St. Peterport and see what's going on. It's just a nice day, there's people round and about. Uh, what's the temperature? 26 degrees. We've got the Bogles Florist on the left. That used to be a cafe that years ago. So we've got the filter and turn system. So you take your turn. She goes, then the other car will go on my right, then I go. And they work well. That's as long as you know how to use them, that is. So I hope everyone's well, and um, yeah, I just wanted to do another drive along from some lovely weather. I'll show you the sights. We've got Motor Mall on the left, which is the garage there. So here's a good subject. What do you think of uh, cyclists riding two or three abreast? Because this was on uh, a social media post last night. 
Um, there was some people commenting, had hundreds of comments about should cyclists been should they be cycling three of less abreast? There was loads of mixed comments about it. These two are actually doing really good. They're not they're not um, even riding two abreast, are they? Just one in front of the other. There you go. So they're turning off. But you know, I get it. You can be stopped behind bikes for some time in Guernsey, a long time, in fact. Um, and it can be frustrating. But normally, if you just wait a bit, they'll either turn off, or you know, you find an opportunity to pass. But the problem is living in Guernsey is the road's so small. There's not many places to pass a cyclist safely. I emphasize the word safely, you can pass, but it can be frustrating. But, on the other hand, what is the rush sometimes? My personal, I'll give you my personal view on it is, and this is what I do, if I'm cycling along and I'm with cycling with someone, if there's no if there's no traffic behind me you can pull up next to the person so you're two abreast and you can speak and have a chat but what I do is the minute I hear there's a car coming behind me I will actually drop back or go in front back into single file so the cars can overtake then once I've overtaken I go back to riding two abreast again then if there's a car come back behind me I pull in and I let the cars overtake, and I will, you know what I mean? And I think that's sensible to me. You know, it's, bit, it's about being courteous, isn't it? Because if you've got a huge tailback of cars behind you, and you're there's three of you riding all three abreast, what's wrong with just noticing that and all pulling into single file for a little bit? Let all the cars overtake, then once they've all got past, then just go back to three abreast again, or two abreast. I, d I don't see what's wrong with that, and that's the thing that frustrates me about it all. I have no issue with people particularly doing it, it's just be courteous to other road users. And if some, and you've got 50 cars behind you around the coast, and you're just obviously just not pulling in for cars, that's the bit that annoys me. But anyway, that's just my view on it. Let me know in the comments below what your view is. It's only my view, I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a, there's a big post about it on Facebook. Anyway, let's crack on. So we're heading down to La Val de Terres. Now, what is the Val de Terres? If you're not from Guernsey, that might not mean much to you. If you are from Guernsey, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The Val de Terres is a big, long, windy road, uh, uphill or downhill, depends where you're going. And it was built quite a while ago and you can access in St Peterport from it the speed limit changes to 25 maximum speed limit in Guernsey is 35 as you'll probably know so you can go left here now there's a sign here saying the seafront closed when's that Saturday at 4 p.m. okay well it's Friday today so we're fine where we go so this is down the Val de Terres I think it said no cycling down the hill on the footpath. I think I just saw that sign. So down we go. So see the line on the ground here, the white line there. That's the finish line for the hill climb. And they race up here. The hill climb in Guernsey. So they close the road. And what's that sign say? Uh, no cycling down on the footpath. Yeah, so you can't cycle down on the footpath. But can you cycle up? I think you can. I had this discussion the other day. So I saw someone cycling up, and I think at some point it tells you you can cycle up this hill on the footpath somewhere, but no cycling down, that makes sense. Yeah, so they race up this hill, obviously the opposite direction to what I'm going now, and they do like, um, it's normally Bank Holiday Mondays, and it's timed, so they see how fast they can get up. They're not racing, it's only one, one car or one motorbike at a time ever just against the clock you may have done the hill climb here there we go yeah. uh, 50 yards. 
So that bay in front there, that's a beautiful bay. That's uh, Havlet Bay. Tides up, it's looking nice, isn't it? Very nice. Speed limit still 25. You can see, see all the black marks on the road. That's from the start line where they accelerate and race up the hill. And there's some here as well. Actually, I think they start here. It's around there somewhere. So we're heading into a busy-ish part. I'd say this is like the main bit, really. Heading into it now. We've got quite a few filtering turns dotted around. So a few options, we stay in this lane, Albert Pier and North. Lane to the left takes us up Fountain Street and the other lane is the bus lane, so that's the bus terminus on the left. So I'm doing about 20 miles an hour at the moment. So we've got the Island Games starting next week, I think it is. Which um, I have no personal particular interest in, but there's a lot of people interested in it. But it's uh, not bad. I'm not against it. I'm just not that into it, but it's good. Good for the island. Oh, lovely, isn't it? I love this little bit of St. Peter Port. It's got such a nice vibe about it. I mean, you don't really mind being stuck in traffic around here, unless you're in a rush somewhere. But I've just finished work, so I'm not in a rush. So I'm quite happy just to toodle through the traffic. So this bit here, crossing, let people cross. Where this guy go? People enjoying the sun. I've actually got my windows closed because I've got my air conditioning on, just low, just nice and cool. And also, when I'm filming, it's um, the sound quality is a little bit better with the windows closed. That's why I tend to close the windows. So on the right there is the boathouse, and on the left here is the Ship and Crown pub and dining. And that building on the left here is the Tourist Information Centre. Big one here on the left. Actually, I'm going to change lanes. Because I'm going to go up St. Julian's Avenue. Flags flying on the roundabout. By the way, this is the biggest roundabout in Guernsey we've got here, I would say. We've got quite a few mini roundabouts in Guernsey, but this is the biggest one. And just to the left there on the railings is a taxi rank. The Waybridge taxi rank. So I've stood there a few nights over the years when I was a bit younger. Can handle it now, though. I was busy, busy today. So it's a Friday today, about twenty past twelve. So it's got that Friday feeling. Porsche in front. That's a Porsche, isn't it? The silver one. Yeah. 
up St Julian's Avenue. So if you keep going straight on this road and just don't turn off anywhere, eventually it will take you down, well roughly don't turn off anywhere, it will take you down to the coast, west coast, you go over the top, down the railways, down the other side, yeah it, sort of take, it will take you to the coast. Might be sometimes a little bit of traffic up here, but I hope you're getting to see uh, the island a bit on these drive-alongs, as usual. If you got any stories or anything you want to let me know, leave it in the comments. Love reading them. Uh, if you do like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. And as usual, you could always consider subscribing if you want to see more stuff about me exploring Guernsey. So I live here and I've got I do videos all about Guernsey, drive alongs, walk alongs. Have a look around the channel if you're interested. There's quite a lot of stuff on here now. I don't think there's any cruise ship in today, I couldn't see one. We've had a few cancelled recently because of the weather, normally the wind. traffic up here, there's always a bit of traffic around here, always. There's Elizabeth College on the right, and I think this shop here opposite, see who this guy on the push bike is, what's it called, Freshfield, that little cafe? Well, not cafe, roll baguette sandwiches, what's it, little shop. I think they do very well. I think you just basically, <laughs> the Elizabeth College lot, just cross the road and get everything they want. They do rolls, baguettes, sandwiches, all sorts. It's really small in there, but I reckon it gets quite busy. You can get quite, you can get around quite well on a bike. There's a lot of electric bikes in Guernsey, like over us now. They're pretty good. Uh, that's the way to travel today. Roof down, Fiat 500 convertible in front. Um, they're okay. My wife's got a Fiat 500. I wouldn't recommend them. <laughs> They're okay for driving around Little Island, but I wouldn't recommend them for anything else. They do the job. So you may notice on the number plates, we don't have any letters. On the car in front, there's no letters. We don't have any letters in Guernsey, just numbers. And we also don't have any MOT, like what we do in the UK. No MOT, although, like most things in Guernsey, there's talk about it coming in. There was a while ago. I don't know what, what stage we're at with those discussions, but it will certainly take a few cars off the roads, I think, if the MOT come in. Most, most, most are okay, but you know, you do see some now and again, and you think, God, there's nowhere they'd pass for your tea. There's health span offices here on the right. It's also time. There's probably people on their lunch break now wandering around town. So we're going to head on down to the coast. See what's going on at Kobo Bay once we get out of this traffic. 
I could pause the video and cut it. I could edit the video and cut all this traffic out, but um, <laughs> well, I think I did that a while ago. Most of you said actually they like they didn't want me to edit it. They like being sat in traffic, so I'll keep it in. Okay. If you do want to get, if you are bored of sitting in this traffic, you could always fast forward the video. I suppose. I sort of yeah, I do get it. I see why people want to watch people watching in traffic. Shall I let these people go? Yeah, see, I've done my good deed for the day. Does anyone wave? Yeah. Not all of them did, though. Alright. We are heading towards the row haze. Cobo Bay and Sunray Park straight on. St. Martin's, the forest or the airport, you'd go left here. Which makes sense. This is tight, isn't it? That was tight. This is Ladies College here. So be careful of a lot of people crossing around this bit. And it's the rockets on the right. So let me know what you think of the roads in Guernsey if you've uh, ever driven here before, got any experiences. I quite like them, but I'm used to it. So. Here we go down the railways, so what have we got? Doghouse on the left, I haven't been in there for ages. That's the doghouse pub. Casual dining, I've quite a bit of live music in there. I suppose it's quite leisurely driving in Guernsey. It can be leisurely, but it depends what situation you're in, doesn't it, really? I suppose if you're working, driving from place to place, and you're late, it can be stressful. If you're on holiday here and you've got quite a bit of time, it is quite leisurely. It, I would say, Gem, on, on the whole, it's a leisurely place to drive. You know, the, the speed limit's not a fast pace. Maximum's 35, and there's different speed zones below that around the island. And there's quite a popular hotel here people stay at, St. Pierre Park Hotel. And we've got Waitrose on the right here. Waitrose at the railways. Yeah, St. Pierre Park Hotel and Golf Resort on the left. That's quite popular. Quite a lot of people stay there, I think. Very central, you know, you can get, you can get in St. Pierre Port within probably five, ten minutes. So there's some cyclists ahead. And again, look, they're, they're fine, they're single. But even then you can't overtake them, can you? If you get two bikes, one behind the other one, sometimes you still can't overtake them. So sometimes it doesn't make any difference, actually, sometimes, whether they're two abreast or not.
when I get to Coba, I'll pull up and I'll show you the view out to sea over the wall. This is high tide, so it should look nice. So, uh, driving instructor in front, learn a car, driving school. It's interesting, in Guernsey, uh, you don't have to be qualified to be a driving instructor. You do not have to be qualified. As long as you've got a driving licence, you can pretty much start a driving school up, <laughs> which is what all these people do. In the UK, there is a test. I know you've got to be a driving instructor. But not here, not in Guernsey. They've spoke about it for years. They have never got round to it. I think you've got to have a police check. And obviously, maybe get your car kitted out of dual control so you've got a brake and a clutch on the passenger side. And get some signage on your car and off you go. Just missed the lights away right here. No doubt I'll catch those cyclists up in a minute. Yeah, we've always got a bit of a breeze in Guernsey. It's very rare we haven't got a breeze. Which is a bit weird for me because when I went to the UK, I realised actually a lot of places in the UK there's never any wind. <laughs> Inland. Here, we're all we've always got wind. It's very rare we haven't got wind going on. Let this car go. In front. Garage will go, well petrol pumps will go to quite a bit there. Heading towards Sunray Park. And we're probably around five minutes away from the west coast. Hopefully I can pull up because there's always cars, quite a busy little car park, but I should be able to find somewhere. I just want to show you the sea. I bet it's looking nice today. We've been, we've been stuck in traffic quite a lot today in this drive along. But it um, doesn't matter really. There is a lot of cars in Guernsey for the size. I don't know the exact figures. I did read them up the other day. But I think for the size of the island, we have one of the most densely populated with cars for the size of the island in the world. I don't know exact figures, but there is a figure on it. Yeah, there's those bikes. We're behind them again. I reckon they're cycling down to the coast. So this would be quite a good little exercise. Let's see if I find a safe place to overtake. They're not riding two abreast. Let's see. I hope they are going down to the coast because I want to show you how difficult it is to overtake anything in Guernsey with the roads. Yeah, they are, they are going down to the coast, yeah. The problem is you get cars overtaking in really unsafe places and it puts everyone else at danger.
Right, let's go. As you can see, there's a solid white line here, so I wouldn't overtake anyway, but even if there wasn't a solid white line, not a hope, you can't overtake here. So you've got to keep a safe distance back from the bikes, that if they were to fall off or get his sock wrapped around in his chain and fell off, that you don't run over him. Nowhere really to overtake yet. And as I keep mentioning, they're not riding a two abreast, they're one behind each other, and I still can't overtake. So, does it make any difference? Is the question. Yeah, that's Glenn. The problem is, you can't really see ahead what's coming. If I was to overtake at any point, the car could be coming the other way. If we're both travelling, say, 30 miles an hour, and the minimum, that'll be combined speed of 60. So you've got to react quite quick. I mean, technically, I could overtake now, I suppose. Actually, I might. There we go. There we go, so that, that, that's safe. So I can see what's going on. I didn't go over the speed limit. Went to about 30 mile an hour. That's the only place I had, and sometimes you might not get that. You get a very short window to overtake anywhere. Well, I, I suppose that's what it's like other places. I suppose you've got the same in, in little towns in the UK. Same sort of, same sort of issues. If you, if you think they're issues, I don't particularly think they are, most of the time. Anyway, I feel better when I have a good moan. <laughs> Here's Kobo, front in front, let me pull onto the car park, don't go anywhere yet. Oh God, is there space, let's see. I might be lucky, if I can pull up on the right. Well, look at the people in the sea. Loads. I'll be lucky if I find space. Uh, no, let me just go. I'm a two man in the other car park combat. Oh, there is a space. Oh, why do you always see a space when you drive past it? There's that nice house there. See that house on the left? This one here, and two peaks, that's being built. That's a beauty. Right, I'm gonna turn around this car park if I can even get in this one. This is a this is a problem with uh, car parks. As soon as the weather's nice, all beach car parks full up. Anyway, look, you see a bit of the sea there. Look, if I can't show you the other side, there's a bit of a view here. Look, that's not quite the view I wanted to show you. However. I think I think we'll leave it there and that's the best view I can give you. <laughs> it's just too busy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Click the screen to watch another video. Remember if you want to see more stuff, remember to subscribe. Thanks for making it this far if you've made it to the end of the video. And have a nice day and I'll see you on the next video.